every time I make myself a cup of coffee before I do a video, it always goes cold by the time I'm even halfway through because I forget I've made it. Determined not to do that today. Hi guys, so welcome back to the book nook. I am in a bit of a funny headspace, so I don't know what this video is going to be. So yeah, I haven't made a video in a little while and I've been getting really kind of anxious every time I try and make one and then getting really frustrated about feeling anxious about making a video because that's not what this is supposed to be. This is supposed to be a fun thing for me. It's a thing I enjoy doing. I think part of it is just like a lockdown blues type situation going on. And I think just feeling kind of generally down about myself at the minute, which just happens. But I think because, and I hate saying this because it all sounds like really I don't like it. But you know, since I've been back doing booktube, of course I've not been doing it as consistently over the last two years. So like things like my views and things and, 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 and uh, yeah, they're not where they they were when I was doing this two years ago. And I think as much as like that's a logical and obvious thing, like of course it's not going to be where it was. I think it's just made me sort of think, oh, am I not doing this right? Am I not doing entertaining enough things? Am I not, uh, yeah, am I not doing this right? Um, so yeah, that's just, I kind of think why I've been getting a little bit anxious every time I go to do a video. And just sort of not really knowing what to do videos about at the moment. I think I'm doing that comparison thing, which, you know, in everyday life normally is is the thief of joy anyway. But I think at the moment in lockdown, it's really easy to kind of compare what you're doing to everybody else. And it's just such a negative thing. You know, I see people doing such sort of creative things on their channel and just really getting stuck in and then I'm just kind of sat here like I don't really know what to do I don't want to seem like I'm just ripping off people having no original ideas things like that so yeah I think I've also got in my head about sort of how frequently I'm allowed to make videos or should make videos or could make videos and been thinking about trying to stick to a schedule and then if I'm not feeling particularly inspired to make a video when the schedule's coming up I get in my head or if I'm particularly inspired to, to think of doing something but I only did a video the previous day I'm like oh no I can't even though I could just film it and put it up another time that would be cleverer. I'm also trying really hard right now not to beat myself up too much about the fact that I try to cut my own hair and I feel like I look like a mushroom head. I finally got it looking like okay for this video and I don't totally hate it right now so I'm just trying not to move my head too much but yeah I succumbed to the temptation of giving myself a lockdown haircut and I went a little bit too nuts I think and yeah got a bit of a mushroom head and every time I wake up now my hair looks like an anime character because it's all just it's also my birthday tomorrow possibly today by the time this goes up, I don't know. And uh, yeah, probably today. So I'll probably do another video today, tomorrow, Monday. And I think around that as well, there was a video that I was planning to do in the build up to my birthday, which I got really excited to do because it was something I thought of doing like nearly two years ago when I was doing booktube more regularly and I just didn't get around to doing it. And then I just kind of, again, fell out of love with it. And that's partly because of what I was reading. So basically the idea was, um, birthday bestseller books. I had found what the best-selling book was the the week I was born back in 92 and it was Dolores Claiborne by Stephen King and I was going to read that. I was also going to read another book because that was from the New York Times bestselling list but then another source of the New York Times bestselling list said that the best-selling book the week I was born was John Grisham's Pelican Brief and then another one said it was Terry McMillan's Waiting to Exhale so I was going to read those three books in the lead up to my birthday. And yeah, I was really kind of excited to do that and I was excited like two years ago to do that and just didn't get around to it, I sort of, yeah. But then at the moment I just wasn't really feeling reading any of those books. And I don't know why, just felt like a kind of a failure, which is totally stupid, I know. And that's because at the moment I've been really, really enjoying the Earthsea books. I have now finished the first four books Tales of Earthsea and really enjoyed those. I think the third one, The Farthest Shore, I struggled with a little bit more. I don't know why I think it was partly me, partly the book, a symbiotic relationship of awkwardness, where I just wasn't into it quite as much. It was quite a different, well, all four books have been so different. I think that's the thing that I've actually really enjoyed about the four books is how different they have all been from each other. The first one kind of felt a bit more like a traditional fairy tale-esque 
fantasy story, which I really dug, but I know it's not for everyone. And then the second one was totally different, switching over to Tanar and a sort of more female orientated story and looking at that. And then the third one kind of felt like it was trying to go back to the kind of tone of the first one, but something about the characters I didn't warm to as much. But I still did really enjoy it. And then the fourth book, Tahanu, totally different again, picks up with Tanar in later life and a child and with Ged after the events of the third book. And yeah, it was so different tonally in terms of content. I think you could tell that it was written quite a while after the others and I, yeah, really enjoyed it. And when I finished those four, I was going to take a break from Earthsea and I was going to read these three birthday best-selling books but then I just yeah I wasn't really in the mood for it and I thought about taking a break from Earthsea but then I ended up picking up Tales from Earthsea, started it and loved the first one which is a little novella called The Finder which is sort of set pre all the stuff of A Wizard of Earthsea. And then for the last sort of 24, 48 hours I haven't really been reading anything, I've just been so kind of in my head that I haven't been able to read anything but I have this evening started on um oh what's it called Dark Rose and Diamond which again is another story that's set kind of outside of Ged and all of that but in the same world so that's kind of what I've been reading at the moment and I suppose that leads into a bit of a haul I'll do that now why not why the devil not so obviously I bought myself and you've seen these two anyway in my Friday Fantasy Feast I got Ursula Le Guin's Tales from Earthsea and the last novel of Earthsea which is The Other Wind so those arrived uh, for me to get stuck into. Another one that I ordered is one that I saw Simon over at Savage Reads talking about and I was like oh that sounds very much my kind of thing and I mentioned I think when I last did a haul that I had bought it and that is Dean Atter's Black Flamingo. Dean Atter someone who I followed on Twitter for a while and really really interested to give this one a go. Then when I was looking through my bookshelves in preparation for the next sort of fantasy feast videos and looking at what I've got, I realised that I only had the first two books in the trilogy of an old colleague of mine, so I've picked up the third volume in that trilogy, which is Firestorm by Lucy Hounsom. used to work with Lucy, she's brilliant, and I'm really excited for that. So now I've got the whole trilogy, so now when I start it I can just blitz the whole thing. Also I got myself a paperback copy of Lanny because I absolutely loved this book. This is another one where I've got the regular hardback and the special edition hardback because I'm a sucker for collecting editions of books that I love. So now I can add the paperback to that little mini collection. And then finally arrived the other day a copy of Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell which I had been a little kind of mm, not sure if it's going to be my cup of tea, not sure if I'm 100% bothered about it and then I've seen everybody raving about it and I was slightly warming to it and I thought okay maybe then it went on the women's prize shortlist and I was like okay yep I'll give it a go I since then watched Simon's video where he talks more about Hamnet and the Bass Rock by Evie Wilde um those two books in particular and he was talking about her Hamnet and it's quite an emotional one and it deals with sort of grief and loss and love and all this so I may save that one for when I'm feeling a little bit more myself and a little bit more steady. So yeah, those are the few books that I've hauled since my last haul. I have got a few more on the way that I know about and a few more on the way that I don't know about as it's my birthday. So yeah, this is a video that I'll probably in lots of ways wish I hadn't done and think it's too kind of mopey and blur, but I don't want to just not make videos because I'm freaking out and then just end up it being a whole cycle. I'd rather just go, you know what guys, I'm feeling a bit meh. <laughs> and then carry on from there. So a bit of a hodgepodgey video, a haul and a chat. I hope that's all right. Um, as I say, feeling a little bit self-conscious about what I'm doing, feeling a bit like I don't know how to do this anymore. Um, so this is a video that I did at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I've also today been painting the ceiling of my bedroom decided I've got the time now, I'm gonna redecorate my bedroom, it's badly needed, fresh coat of paint for a while, and oh boy is my arm hurting. I have basically coated my whole arm in tiger balm to try and help. So A, that was like rubbing earwax into your arm, and B, I stink now. I'm hoping that means that I will sleep okay, I'm in the spare bed, and I didn't sleep super great in it last night, so we shall see how refreshed I wake up feeling on my birthday. I'm hoping tomorrow I'm going to wake up feeling a bit more with it on my birthday and just try and have a nice chill day. I'm hoping for sunshine rather than the rain that we've been having. That'd be great. Someone could arrange that for me. That'd be super nice.
as I say, most people will probably be watching this on the Monday and be very confused, but yeah, my birthday is on May the 4th. I am a Star Wars baby, and May the 4th be with you. I have now in this video told you the year I was born and the day I was born. So you know how old I am. I'm 28, it's not a secret. So I hope you guys are doing okay in lockdown, <laughs> better than my head's been doing the last week. I should say, I'm not trying to use this video as a fishing for kind of compliments. I guess there's part of me that would like some reassurance that this is all still okay and that what I'm doing is still enjoyable for people, but as much as anything, as I say, if I didn't do anything, I would just be sitting and stewing about it and then probably get too scared to come back and do anything at all. So I thought, better something than nothing. That's my philosophy. Better than nothing. Really? Really? That's what we're going with? Sure. Mm. And it's actually still warm. <laughs> so I'm going to go get into bed with some more Ursula Le Guin and wake up tomorrow on my birthday, hopefully with not the most painful right arm in the world. It's not looking good right now. Hope you're all keeping well and I'll see you again soon.